Hey, what's up everybody? Josh KI6NAZ. I knew when I made that Abri antenna video that I would do a greater deep dive and go into some of more of the details, how effective they are. And today is the day we talk about that. So when I found these funky antennas on Amazon, I just thought they were going to be you know, kind of a joke uh, video, but then it turned out that to me, when I use it on the radio, they worked out really well, and I really couldn't explain why. Um, I didn't do any real deep testing on it, uh, but I set out to do so. And that led me down the road of HT antenna testing. I'm gonna cover this really quickly and then I promise we'll get right into it. So here, here's a, a just the Abri 18 inch antenna, right? And actually I've got one on my, my Kenwood uh, THF6 right now. And the thing to remember about an HT, and, and this is why a lot of people rag on HTs so hard, is that they are a vertical, right? So the, the, the center connector of the coax, right, if you will, is the vertical element and then the call it the negative side the return side is the radio itself the body of the radio and then your hand holding the radio and and your head um, and then whatever coily bits there are in the middle well so testing these i've learned um, in a in a way that you get a good apples to apples comparison is difficult because every company makes their testing rigs for when they're tuning these things different and how they do it, and as I learned how they do it, they use like a fake head. They, they create a simulacrum of the radio, or they'll put the IF channel in out, out of the radio into something like a, you know, a readout display. And then they'll have a fake head filled with saline or some kind of stuff. Um, and, and this is one way to do it. There are other ways too, but that's what they do to mimic the human in the loop, right? Because when you're transmitting the, the HTs right here, or you have the mic connected with a cable, which is still part of the loop. So testing it any other way than how they tested it would be unfair to the manufacturer that made the antenna. So doing a comparison of the Abri against Nagoya's and the Nagoya's against the signal sticks, you're really only as good as the closest you can get to the test apparatus for the company that made the antenna. So none of that here. What we're going to do quite simply is transmit from a location using all the antennas and we're going to receive it with an SDR, an SDR that can capture the signal to noise ratio. And we're going to see which antenna transmits the best and then we're going to flip things around. We're going to put the antenna on the SDR, the Abri antennas on the SDR, and then we're going to transmit into it using the same antenna to get a benchmark. That will very quickly give us an understanding of which antennas both transmit the best and receive the best on 2 meter and 70 centimeter. Sorry for the long-winded uh, example to start, but let's get started. All right, guys. So I have the 18-inch Abri. I'm going to call out on a simplex frequency. Just make sure we got a good connection. I realized when I was putting the edits together that the 2 meter portion of the transmit side, so just a little part of this video upcoming, the audio on the receive side was really low. That doesn't affect the signal strength, I just want you to know when it sounds low, uh, that was not intentional, that was my mistake. So don't worry about it, it'll be over in a minute. Notice the signal strength, that's the important part. Now I'm going to take the 24 inch folded do the same thing. KI6 NAZ, KI6 NAZ radio test on the 24 inch folded Abri antenna radio test. Now unfold it. I leave the 18 up because um, I always leave it up when I transmit. I don't know. KI6 NAZ, KI6 NAZ radio test with the 24 inch Abri unfolded radio test. 42 inch Abri. KI6 NAZ, KI6 NAZ. 42 inch of re-antenna folded KI-6-9-A-Z. Now, <laughs> unfolded, so long. KI-6-N-A-Z, KI-6-N-A-Z, doing a radio test for the unfolded of re-antenna, unfolded 42 inch of re-antenna. As a constant, I have two Nagoya 771s that we're going to do a test with. So this is the con constant. 
KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ, radio test with the Nagoya 771, we'll call this antenna 1. Nagoya 771 number 2. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ, Nagoya 771, antenna number 2, radio test. Back for 70 centimeters. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ, radio test on the 18 inch Abri antenna, KI6NAZ. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ with the folded 24 inch Abri antenna. Antenna radio test. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ with the unfolded 24 inch Abri antenna. KI6NAZ. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ with the folded 42 inch Abri antenna. KI6NAZ. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ with the unfolded 42 inch Abri antenna. KI6NAZ. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ with the Nagoya 771 antenna. Call this Nagoya number one. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ with the Nagoya number two, Nagoya 771 antenna test. KI6NAZ. So I'm in the uh, deep recesses of my garage. I'm about 13 feet away from my SDR play that has the 18 inch a Brie connected to it, and I've got a Baofeng on a dummy load. I'm going to transmit into this, and we're going to get an SWR or an S power meter reading off of the SDR play, which will give us an idea of how powerful the receive side is when compared against all the other antennas. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ on two meters, transmitting into the 18 inch Abri antenna. Okay, now let's do it on 70 centimeters. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ transmitting from a dummy load on 70 centimeters into the Brie 18 inch antenna on 70 centimeters. KI 6 NAZ, KI 6 NAZ transmitting into the 24 inch Brie antenna from a dummy load on 2 meters. KI 6 NAZ, KI 6 NAZ transmitting from a dummy load on 70 centimeters into a 24 inch Brie antenna. KI 6 NAZ, KI 6 NAZ transmitting from a dummy load into the 42 inch a Brie antenna on two meters. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ transmitting into a dummy load on 70 centimeters into the 42 inch a Brie antenna. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ transmitting on two meters from a dummy load into the Nagoya 7701 antenna. KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ transmitting through a dummy load on 70 centimeters into the Nagoya 771 antenna. So to put a bow on this whole thing, here are my thoughts on the Abri antennas. It's obvious that they favor VHF. They do very well transmit and receive on VHF. I found, interestingly enough, and this is something we should probably keep in mind, that when it's folded, kind of just in half like this, any one of the models, it seems to do better on UHF for transmit. You get about a half S unit greater transmit power than when you use it unfolded. I don't know why that is necessarily, but I have a feeling it's due obviously to it being folded and something to do with the size of that frequency for UHF, but I don't know. Now, the big surprise for me is how fantastic the receive side of the Abri antenna is. Specifically on UHF, I was very impressed by the numbers that we got on the 24 inch and the 42 inch Abri antenna on UHF. It blew the Nagoya out of the water and Nagoya as an antenna goes, the 771, is much stronger on the UHF side. And I expected it to perform better on the transmit side, which it did, but I also expected it to just trounce the Abris on receive and it didn't. So that tells me, again, the Abri antennas, all of them, um, the 18 inch, the 24 inch, and the 42 inch, are a value priced antenna. The quality could be dubious for some of you. Uh, this bend here, if you leave it like that for too long, will develop a bit of memory. This one in particular, the 42 inch, gets a little floppy when you unfold it. But still, a very good antenna for the price. Its novelty factor is obviously through the roof. Uh, it is a little weird. It, you may kind of come across as a weirdo if you have one of these on your radio. But it performs well, and you can't take that away from it. So if you have any thoughts on how I could improve upon this review, if there's something you would like to see done, we can do a follow-up video or something like that, post them in the comments below. Now, I will leave you with this one thing on the 42-inch. Uh, I was going to snake this through the webbing on my load-bearing harness where I've got my magazines and stuff like that for my rifle, and uh, I had an incredibly difficult time bending this. And, and the problem isn't the vertical bend. It's this kind of horizontal bend that you need to put into it. 
Um, when you start doing that horizontal bend, you will kink it irreparably, and you're not going to be able to like straighten it out after that point. Further, if you do get it all bent up and it's like sitting wrapped around like that, your radio is not really going to be movable. You're going to have to use a hand mic. So uh, keep that in mind. I'm, I'm not really advocating anybody do that. There are actual systems you can buy that are, are antennas that are built into harnesses if you really need that. Anyway, I am Josh KI6NAZ. I'd love it if you give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't and click that bell because I live stream most Fridays, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we try and cover all kinds of different topics about amateur radio. I'll see you then.